Okay, welcome to Year 12 Business Studies. In the first of the videos I'll be posting in respect to operations. So this video is going to start by looking at the role of operations uh, within the context of a business or an organisation. Starting off with a bit of an introduction and then we'll look at the strategic role of operations uh, and the two key components that relate to the strategic role of operations. So first and foremost is a bit of an introduction to operations. As you would remember from Year 11 Business Studies, given it was covered a couple of times, particularly with respect to your um, business plan assessment task where you needed to consider operations, but then also in the last topic uh, where we touched on operations again, operations refers or relates to those processes in the business that involve the transformation or really uh, the production uh, of goods and, and or services. Uh, and it, it does apply to both the manufacturing and service sector, although often operations is easiest to be considered in the context of a business that is producing something as opposed to a business that is providing a service. But um, uh, as you can see in the, in the diagram below there, the cartoon, if you will, there's a, a bit of an example of someone who's producing effectively glass, uh, which is easy to think about, you know, pr producing a can of um, Jack Daniels or a can of Coca-Cola is easier to consider uh, and the end-to-end -end processes and the transformation required is easier to think about rather than um, providing a accounting service to a client. Having said all that though, it's just as important to be considering it from a service perspective. So in manufacturing, operations is the, are those processes that relate to turning the raw materials uh, and resources into outputs of finished goods. So those raw materials might be things like uh, iron ore, and the iron ore is then turned into steel, and the steel is then potentially uh, sold to a car manufacturer who manufactures that car. Whereas uh, for a service uh, in the services sector, operations really is referring to the process in carrying out the service itself. For example, Qantas is providing a service to its airline customers, and that service is taking them from point A to point B, and there, but there is an operations process occurring there and there is a transformation of resources that's occurring there. It's just that the resource is different. In many respects, the resource is the people at Qantas that are allowing that service to be provided to the customer. Okay, so what does effective operations management looks like, look like? Sorry, uh, it, looks, it has a couple of different realms or a couple of different contexts. Number one, it's about productivity. So how, how do we get the most output how do we achieve the most gain from our inputs? It also relates to competitive advantage. So how do we create features um, that will make us better than our competitors? How do we ensure that our operations process is better than those of our competitors? How is Qantas's process better uh, than Singapore Airlines or than, than, or than Emirates, for example? How does that operations management make it a better business and better than its competitors? How does operations allow it to adjust to shifting customer needs? So choosing better inputs, for example, um, so that they can meet their consumer trends. Uh, and also efficiency. So how does the operations process mean the business can be more efficient, uh, which in a sense comes back to the first one about productivity, but reducing waste, lowering costs. So how does Qantas, for example, streamline its business, make its business more efficient with respect to operations so that it can reduce costs and ultimately will allow it to achieve its business objectives, i.e. profit, more effectively. Okay, now that was really just a brief introduction to operations. Now we'll look at the first key point, which is the strategic role of operations, particularly in regards to cost leadership and good service differentiation. Okay, so the strategic role of operations, strategic means long-term, and it also means that affecting all key business operations. So affecting every element of that particular business, all encompassing. So the strategic role involves operations managers contributing to the strategic direction. So the long-term direction or the strategic plan, the long-term plan of the business. If you remember back to year 11, uh, year 11 business studies, you would have um, potentially come across tactical uh, planning or tactical management. Um, and but and that's short that's shorter term where strategic is long term and considering the whole business. So strategic goals are to come back to those points made in the previous slide about improving productivity, improving efficiency, improving the quality of the outputs so that the business can achieve its long term objectives. Which ultimately, in terms of objectives, we're really talking about things like revenue, reducing costs, maximizing profit. So the strategic role of operations, this last point, 
is to carry out these transformation processes or those transformation processes to help the business achieve its objectives. So carrying out the transformation processes, so turning the inputs into outputs to help the business achieve its business objectives, i.e. profitability, solvency, liquidity. Okay, so the, the long-term decisions regarding operations of the business, i.e. the conversion of those inputs into outputs, <clears throat> enables the business to maximize its profits. If a cost leadership approach is used, then the strategic role of operations is to reduce the costs of the transformation process. So if the business chooses to uh, take a cost leadership approach, okay, we want to be a cost leader. We, either the business. Qantas, we want to be a cost leader. Okay, we want to have the lowest costs involved or incurred in our business, which will then allow us to achieve our strategic objectives of profitability, of solvency, of um, efficiency, or and or the business might take a good service differentiation approach. Okay, this last, this third point here. So a good service differentiation approach is used when the strategic role of operations, i.e. the long-term planning of the business or plan of the business, is to make the product or service stand out on the basis of the chosen attributes. So again, is Qantas looking to differentiate its business from Cathay Pacific, from Singapore Airlines, and therefore allowing that or helping those attributes to achieve its objectives, and or is it taking a cost leadership approach? So is it trying to be a cost leader, lowest costs, or a product that is profoundly different? Think about Pepsi and Coke. I don't think you could argue that Pepsi and Coke are pretty similar. Okay, yes, there's a slight difference in taste. So they're not differentiating significantly on this second point here. So therefore, from an operations perspective, they're probably taking a cost leadership approach where they are trying to reduce the cost to make a can of Coke or Pepsi so therefore they can achieve their long-term objectives. Okay, and these two slides are just kind of touching on those. Having the lowest cost leadership, lowest costs, Good service differentiation, distinguishing products in some way from those of yours, from those of your competitors. Okay, we'll have a look at that in class. Okay, we'll also look at Qantas in class. Okay, good service differentiation, again, just elaborating what we're saying before, differentiating your product from its competitors to allow the business to achieve its objectives through operations management. Okay, we'll have a look at Qantas in detail in class. Okay, we'll leave that there. In the next video, we'll look at goods and or services in different industries.